So I hope you know that you're in a lot of trouble. You've lost a lot of people, a lot of money. Guys, just talking to SBF here, trying to talk some sense into him. So what you gotta do is turn yourself in and just cooperate, all right? So we'll talk about this later. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And um, this FTX story, you have no idea. It is getting way more crazier than I even thought. Um, we're talking about metaverse space bunnies or metaverse bunnies, I should say. Um, when you see it, you're like, oh my God, what is going on? All right, so first, um, let's go over this. So it turns out that uh, there was a leaked version of their balance sheet. And uh, the reason why this is important is because at the moment, people who have money with FTX, essentially you want your money back. And we're trying to figure out, okay, how much money can they return to people? Um, as it turns out, I was looking at this, so 9 billion in liabilities, uh, 900 million in liquid assets. So it's like 9 billion in like money that they owe. <laughs> um, one of the things is that uh, they they were, remember they were look, they were asking people for six to 10 billion. So basically they were asking people to, to bail them out, to you know get them to at least be balanced on the balance sheet, which is the whole point of the whole thing. Um, but um, yeah, 9 million liquid assets, 5.5 billion in less liquid assets. So it's not as bad as we originally thought in terms of um, you know, uh, actual money that they have. But when they when they say less liquid, this is where it becomes tricky because if you can't find any buyers and also to the value of much of their assets is going down. And then you have 3.2 billion in less liquid assets or e-liquid assets, I should say. Um, so people have been debating like what this all this stuff means. Um, and I'm gonna show you the balance in a second, but the reason is because the way they have things labeled is kind of weird. Um, like for example, they have um, a balance sheet as, as a negative 8 billion of hidden, poorly internal, internally labeled fiat currency. Hidden and poorly internal, internally labeled. So what does that mean? Are you like hiding $8 billion? Or wait, what? Wait, wait, what is going on? But it's a negative. So um, I was looking at this here. This is, their, this is the leaked balance sheet. And you guys can find this. Um, we'll look at it together though. But it, the, the top of it, and this is, um, the thing is there are two balance sheets that Bankman Freed had. Uh, there's like the public one that all the employees had. And this is like, I guess, maybe the private one that maybe he had. I, I don't know all the details. I mean, we don't, no one knows all the details of this stuff. We're just getting, you know, stuff out as it comes out. And then here you can see there's a hidden poorly internal. Actually, you know what? Let me get my arrow here. Give me one second. I will get my arrow. There's my arrow. Good. Um, here is the hidden poorly internally labeled fiat balance sheet. So that's like negative 8 billion. Um, the other thing too, which was, which is interesting is it says all of these values are rough values, could be slightly off. Um, <laughs> obviously, chance of a typo. It's like what? So I, you know, I don't think this is an account. I think this is this could be just him, like his internal. I, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to know what to make of this stuff. Um, evidently, though, they have like a whole bunch of Robinhood. This is like their biggest holding. Um, what is it? About four hundred and seventy-two million worth of Robinhood stock. They got a whole bunch of cash, evidently, in Ledger Prime. That's interesting. So that would lead me to believe that I guess they're calling like this is the real ledger and then ledger, Pro I, I don't know. It, it, it sounds like, you know, you have a multiverse and the main verse, <laughs> but they have about 200 million in, in, um, in cash. But you know, the problem is they're, they're still like 9 billion short. Then they got a bunch of, um, this is this is some of their other bigger holdings guys, was like 553, I'm looking at this here, 553 million of their, of their, their in-house token, the FTT is basically worthless. Um, and then the Solano and then the Serum, SRM, um, and then uh, I, I'm not as familiar with Serum or Solano. People who are in crypto can say way more of that stuff than, than me. Uh, I'm just saying that um, this is what's on there. Uh, the Serum evidently, I guess, has been crashing. I, I think it's because everyone knows they got like a whole bunch of this stuff. So if my, yeah, it looks like they got like about 2.2 billion roughly of the Serum stuff. But, you know, th the thing is though, is is that that is of, if the prices were when this thing was made, right? This this stuff is crashing, crashing, crashing. So, you know, the key is like, well, they got cash, they got some stocks, like what can they sell? Because people right now, and, and everyone's gonna be different. I, I don't know exactly like if people just, hey, I just want my crypto back or people like, you know what? Just give me cash, right? So so this is where it's, it gets interesting because some people will just want their crypto back. They're like, yo, give me my Bitcoin and my Ethereum back. Other people are like, yo, just give me my cash. Um, now here's the other thing that was kind of interesting because um, people were wondering like, okay, so how are their books all messed up? Didn't anyone notice? So it turns out, um, this is, uh, there, there's a couple accounting firms, I guess, that were auditing their books. And these are not necessarily the major ones. Uh, and you'll see why in a second. This is where it gets weird. Uh, so one of them, I guess, was called um, Armanino. And, and honestly, I haven't heard of this one. It, it's, if you don't know, the big accounting firms would be like, um, or auditing firms, I should say, would be like a, a Deloitte uh, or a uh, Pricewaterhouse 
or <laughs> testing my accounting knowledge here. And I took accounting business school, trust me. Um, and uh, a couple other ones that, that I could totally name right off the top of my head, but I, I just can't think of it right now. Um, but there's there's like, I believe there's four of them at the moment, the big fours refer to them at, so. Um, but these are not them. But it, the whole point is this isn't like your major one. Yeah, Pricewaterhouse, it, anyway. Please write in the comments that the main four accounting forms, I'm just having a brain fart at the moment. A lot of information flying around in my head. <laughs> um, here is, um, uh, th this is uh, interesting though, because um, one of the things that is the other one was the uh, called Prager uh, Metis. Um, evidently, they uh, teamed up with FTX. This is one of the auditing uh, accounts, or, or you can see it's a certified public account. So they basically audit their books, make sure everything looks good, and then they certify it and send it to everyone else, right? Um, and they're, they're really proud to support FTX. This is a, a picture taken at uh, Yankee Stadium. They have deleted this page. This is actually a cached version of their website. And um, this is where it gets weird. Uh, they were actually partying from essentially getting the deals with FTX and just, you know, uh, getting more successful, I guess you should say. And um, part of their partying was with this um, uh, called Baby Dolls. Um, and this is a metaverse uh, bunnies. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. And in fact, we're actually gonna take a look at their opening together. So um, well, let's jump into the metaverse. So I hope you enjoyed our little trip to the metaverse. So evidently this accounting firm, the the the, um, the Pragus, uh, this is the baby dolls. They have an Instagram. You can look at this stuff for yourself. I did not know this was a thing. Uh, who knows? Um, and then it also turns out that this Pragus, um, there was a uh, uh, essentially like an oversight board was looking at their practices and they, they found some uh, deficiencies in their accounting practices. And uh, this particular accounting firm, um, they're the first one that, you know, opened up in the metaverse. So... Uh, they're sort of on the cutting edge and uh, wanted to be the you know leading crypto uh, uh, essentially accounting firm or whatever. Um, but uh, some of their deficiencies, I was looking at some of these, is like essentially they they may mislabel cash, uh, how much cash someone has. They may you know mislabel how much revenue a company has. They may mislabel <laughs> how much accounts receivable they have. Um, accounts receivable is like uh, how much uh, you know people are going to pay you. They haven't paid you yet, but it's on the books as someone's going to pay you. Uh, goodwill and tangible assets. This would be like stuff like when you say merge with a company, what is, you know, brand value, this kind of thing. So um, I, I took accounting in, in business school, but I, I'm not an accountant by any stretch, but I do understand these basic things. Um, but basically they're just lying about stuff or not lying is the right word, but not not accurate books is the best way to describe it. So because when you say lying, you know, who knows what, what they're doing, but it, it does seem all questionable. And I've never heard of this Prager Metis thing. So again, if anyone is an accountant, uh, in the community, please share some thoughts. I just haven't heard of this company myself. Um, now, Sam Bergman Fried, we talked about before that uh, there was a rumor he was running to the uh, Argentina. That may end up not being true. That's why I, I made very really clear that was a rumor. And, you know, rumors about where this guy is is all over the, the place. Um, evidently, though, I, I saw a report yesterday that he was interviewed by um, the police in the Bahamas. And now this comes out. This was just a few hours ago. It says bankrupt FTX faces criminal investigation in the Bahamas. Financial police in Bahamas were uh, where Sam Bigman Freed, FTX has headquarters, are working with local security regulator to investigate if any criminal conduct has occurred. Now, this is my opinion on this one. Um, you know, the Bahamas, <laughs> I don't think of the Bahamas as being like, you know, a heavily regulated or, or, or you know, uh, really strict on this kind of stuff. They purposely, you know, keep it loose so that these kind of companies come down there. Um, if, if I had to guess, uh, it's some sort of government or mafia is, you know, essentially bribing off the, the Bahamas regulators to put some pressure on Bankman Freed. I think the reason why people haven't necessarily just like arrested him immediately is because they want their money back first and then they send him to prison. Like if you just send him to prison, he's not going to cooperate at all. So I, I think that's what's going on. If you guys think anything different, let me know. But I, I this is how I read the situation. And we already know uh, Bankman Fried has, has stepped down from CEO and now there's like another person coming in to basically liquidate everything and get people back their money. And essentially the um, big money is going to get their money back first. So, um, you know, one thing I've, I've noticed that the big money is cooling off on crypto and NFTs, so they're not so eager to get, get into it. But 
Um, you know, one of the things that, that when you're trying to get your money back, as I say, a retail investor watching this, just know that you're in a long line of people. Um, and you know, who comes first is anyone's guess. Is it mafia first? Is it government first? Is it, you know, things like BlackRock first or those kind of things. So, uh, we'll see, but I, I can promise you that you as a retail investor, you're way down on the line, especially like, for example, if, if it turns out, you know, you look at the balance sheet of, of um, FTX and they only have say like, you know, 500 uh, million or maybe they have 5 billion, whatever they have, but they have to pay out like say, you know, 10 billion, they're, they're like only 50% available. And so if you're out of the losing 50%, you're just not gonna see any money again. Um, the other crypto exchanges have also been frozen. Um, this is just now, I'm just reading this now. I don't know this one. Crypto exchange AAX uh, is suspending withdrawal. So if you, and if you guys know what that one is, I, I just don't, I don't know. There's, I didn't, there's so many of these things, I can't keep track of them all. Um, this one I have heard of though, uh, this is BlockFi. And um, someone in the community brought this up to my attention. I looked it up and unfortunately, um, I guess, uh, like I said, someone in our community tried to withdraw money from BlockFi uh, yesterday and we're unable to get that. So you can see here, BlockFi says it can no longer operate its business as usual, pausing client withdrawals in the wake of FTX collapse. So my opinion on this stuff is, is there's, a, there's a chance that your money is gone, but you know, it, I, I, I can't tell you the future, but I just, I wouldn't feel safe with my money in these kind of places, especially when they can freeze it. And I, the phrase that a lot of these crypto people have been saying is uh, when you keep your crypto on exchange, you know, uh, not your keys, not your crypto. Uh, the other thing is too is, um, some of these may or may not be FDI, FDI insured. I mean, it could just be a whole debacle. You just, you just, you just don't know. And I just, I personally don't trust this stuff. You know, your cash may be in a bit different position if you're in, say, Coinbase or a BlockFi, um, assuming that they're all insured and stuff like that. The, these firms are always trying to reassure you. And the problem is, it's just nothing feels safe in this space. And I, and I understand how people feel. So. Hopefully all this stuff is useful, helpful for you. I know the story keeps getting weirder and weirder. I'll try to keep giving updates when I can and um, love to hear your thoughts on the metaverse bunnies. Uh, did you know that was a thing? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and would you go to these parties? So thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.